What do you think is the most important thing a captain in a cricket team has to check out in order to win the game? Is it his team players? Is it his strategies, the fielding plan? Or is it the opponent's strategies? What is it? Would you believe the first thing he has to check out will be the pitch report? How the ground is, like is it suitable today for a bowling, uh, bowling first or is it suitable for batting first? And uh, how is the weather? All this is the first thing a captain looks at before deciding what his strategy is going to be for the game. So, not only in cricket, in many things in life, before we bring our A game, we have to first of all analyze the ground we are going to play in. How can you apply this in maths? So, that's what we are going to talk about in the second episode of The Master Show. What I told you a little while ago about the cricket match and the pitch report, let's see how that same analogy can be applied for maths. So, most of the time, whenever you feel like you have to start learning maths and you have to start improving in the subject, the very first thing you do is you dive directly into the sums. Now, that can be something which is a little bit exhausting and it will definitely kind of not give you the proper start for your clients. So, what you have to do is, first of all, you need to understand what the subject is and you need to understand what are the branches, what are the categories, or what are the uh, divisions you have in this. And finally, of course, you do have to understand what is the use of studying this subject. These three things are really important. It's kind of like the pitch report. It is, it is not the sums, it's not the methods, it's not the theorems, it's not the formulae. It's about learning what the subject is. It's about having an understanding about what mathematics is and of course, knowing where maths is used. So we feel connected to the subject. So in this episode, what I'm going to talk about is mainly these three points. So you get an overall idea about mathematics. And since this episode and this entire series is targeted at beginners, I'm going to dilute all the definitions and avoid a lot of technical jargon. Definitions I'm going to give here will be very simple and uh, will be understandable for anyone. It will not be very technical. So there will be certain like when you learn even deeper into the subject, you might realize that certain things I told you are like a very basic version of the things. So without much ado, let's jump into the episode. So what is mathematics? You know, it's a subject. It's something you're going to face in your exams. But what it is really about? Now, the technical definition of mathematics is, of course, it is this, uh, it's sort of like a science or a study of numbers. Uh, spaces, quantities and patterns and stuff. I would like, especially when you take basic mathematics, what you study at this level, I would rather address it as a language. Maths is just a language like English, Sinhala, Tamil, Arabic or whatever languages you have studied so far. If you look very uh, closely into the subjects you are studying in mathematics, you would see that more often what you learn is how to interpret certain things using symbols. It can be numbers, it can be the addition, subtraction, square root, symbols. Mostly what you are doing is translating your thoughts into a symbolic form. So we can call, we can technically call maths to be one of the languages you study. The main difference between maths and the other languages you study is while certain languages are regional. Now for an example, uh, Tamil is spoken only in some countries and Sinhala is spoken only in Sri Lanka mainly and uh, Arabic will be spoken mainly in Middle East and English even though it can be stated as one of the international languages still there are lots of parts in the world in where they do not speak English. Everyone talks maths in the same way. So that's why we call it as a universal language something which can be applied throughout the world and maybe even out of the world. All the lessons which is included in maths can be categorized into broad sections and depending on the context the way these things are categorized varies but if you look into this in the perspective of your all level curriculum then of course i can categorize the lessons what you study in maths into six sections section number one is what we call as arithmetics and if that scares you just simply remember it as numbers 
any lesson which has something to do with numbers will fall under this category uh, some examples are fraction decimal ratios and so on and the second category something which you are familiar with is algebra uh, in very <laughs> simple and very uh, layman terms we can say algebra is where letters start to come into maths so when you use x y and all the letters in maths that's the part which we call as algebra some lessons which gets included in this is like equations expressions binomial expression factorization and all and uh, the third category sometimes the most feared out of all the categories is geometry or in simple terms the study of angles shapes lines and points and uh, then of course we have uh, measurements where we uh, talk about volume area perimeter and stuff and uh, we do have sets and probability and statistics so sets and probabilities where we talk about the venn diagrams the probability trees and everything and whereas we have statistics uh, in our curriculum we mostly call it as data representation pie charts histograms median mode uh, mean and stuff so that falls under statistics i have uh, made a pdf which includes the lessons which fall into these categories nicely uh, divided and represented in a proper way so i will attach a link of that in the description so you any of you guys who wants to see what lessons falls under what categories in your all level syllabus i'm talking about the national curriculum then you can of course download the pdf which is provided in the description so if you want to master your maths no pun intended there uh, then i would suggest that out of these categories what i spoke about uh, i want you all to revise these things mainly now if you take numbers or arithmetic it's a very big section there are quite a lot of lessons under it but if you are a basic beginner if you are someone who is planning out like if, if your maths marks are below 50 i would recommend you to just be thorough with the basic lessons in numbers or the basic lessons which fall under the category of numbers which are you have to know how to add subtract multiply and divide which is like obvious but also like you have to be thorough with how to simplify how to operate uh, decimals uh, fractions and negative numbers these three things even though might be like the most the elementary things in the subject still if you are not good with these things even if you understand any of the advanced lessons you might struggle a lot to do the sums because say you are bad with negative numbers and uh, you study graphs later on even if you understand graphs which is an advanced lesson when it comes to negative numbers when you are operating negative numbers or when you are uh, calculating something related to negative numbers you will struggle and that will make that lesson also something which you don't understand so therefore the very first thing i want you all to do is doesn't matter how uh, silly or how uh, small that lesson looks i want you all to have a thorough revision a thorough practice about uh decimals fractions negative numbers how to operate them basically so that is like the basic lessons in numbers and uh, then of course i want you all to move over to algebra in that i want you all to understand how to simplify small algebraic expressions nothing big nothing complex how to solve very simple equations not simultaneous equations not quadratic equations learn how to simplify how to solve very simple equations and of course learn how to substitute in algebra and the next category we had was geometry it can be as i mentioned already it can be one of the hardest sections in mathematics but when you are doing your basics all you have to know is be thorough with the basic theorems learn how to do short questions and when you are starting do not bother about how to do proving questions which we call as riders so that we can do later at the first step you have to concentrate on the very small things and you have to make sure you are good at it so that you can learn the rest of the stuff later so in measurements try to memorize the formula the area formula and uh, the volume formula and uh, all the other uh, things you have basically and learn how to substitute in them nothing much more than that and in sets and probability of course is something you can keep it for later but if you really want to get into it learn how to write sets that will be more than enough but more than the last two i really want you to concentrate on numbers algebra and geometry the very basic ones because if you are not thorough with this if you do not know how to handle these you will not be able to understand any of the lessons which is to come later on in your syllabus so this could be the 
head start you need if you want to do this do not think of these as lessons which is not worth your grade or which is not uh, which are too small for you all if you all want to start this is where you have to start because even if you are slightly bad at these things that is going to have a big impact on the lessons which is going to come later on in the syllabus and by the way if you all want me to do another youtube series which covers this basic lessons i told you if you want me to teach you how to uh, what do you say handle decimals fractions numbers and basic geometry theorems then of course drop a comment down in the video and i will try to make that happen very soon now we know what is mathematics we know what are the branches of it and we also know uh, what are the basic lessons we have to go through and uh, on top of that the last thing i want to add in this episode is uh, this is like maybe the most common question about mathematics like why do we really have to study mathematics like question, students ask me this all the time why do we have to study mathematics are we going to use pythagoras theorem in real life are we going to use geometry in real life what is this all about why do we even have to even bother to study this so the answer is a bit of a long one but i'll try to keep it short and sweet if it was not for maths you would not be enjoying a lot of luxuries or the conveniences you are having at the moment uh, you won't be having your house you won't be having the the chair you sit at the device you are watching this through all these things are invented through some impact of mathematics they do have some part of that has to do with mathematics so if maths was not there in the world you would lose a lot of things you have at the moment starting from your clothes your houses your technical devices and everything apart from that you may think okay fine uh, let the scientists handle maths why do we have to study maths like you know i am not going to be a mathematician i am not going to be a scientist i am not going to do anything with maths i am going to be someone else maybe i'm going to be a youtuber maybe i'm going to like you know be a tiktok celebrity or maybe i'm going to become an artist or an author maybe person who has a career in something which does not include maths at all then why do i still have to study maths now so the answer for this question is very simple so many of you think that what do you say if i'm studying algebra i have to apply it in real life if i'm studying geometry i have to apply it in real life but that's not the case I always make this comparison whenever a student asks me about this. Think about a person who is a fitness freak, like someone who is into fitness. Uh, say it's you, you want to get fit, you want to get strong. What do you do? You go to the gym, you hit the weights, you try to make yourself strong by uh, doing all the exercises. Now in the gym, you are going to do a lot of stuff. Like let's say lifting weights. You are going to lift like heavy weights, maybe twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty kilograms, very heavy weights. in real life are you going to lift that kind of weights in your real life no right but then why are you doing that in the gym the reason is if you go through that intense uh, exercise make your muscles stronger and definitely will make you achieve your fitness goals and just like that when you are doing maths even though what we do in the lesson might not directly be there in your life it will definitely help you to improve certain very important skill which will help you regardless of the career you choose in the future for an example you might not use pythagoras theorem in real life i agree but the skills you get when you do a question related to pythagoras theorem how you analyze the question how you gathered the necessary data and how you figured out what should be the solution and how you applied that solution these skills okay these skills are taught mainly by maths and this will definitely help you to look at the real world problems in a different mindset and it will help you think rationally and logically which i personally guarantee you is going to definitely help you solve a lot of problems in real life i personally thank mathematics because my love towards the subject and my interest towards the subject has helped me in so many ways not only because i am a maths teacher but even in my life even when i want to handle a situation even if i want to solve a problem i have been managing a school and i have been managing like nearly thousands of students every year and i have been managing my employees my own academy and even my personal life my family and everything to manage all these the skills i have acquired by doing maths has really definitely helped and sometimes it does give me a leading edge over the others and uh, to think differently and trust me like even my creative processes even my designing skills or even whatever the ideas i come up with i thank maths because uh, there is an impact from that subject towards my creative life as well so why did i explain all these now that's because as i explained in my previous episode that there is a general hatred 
and uh, there is a general stereotypical thought that maths is something which is unnecessary which is overrated and uh, that has kind of created a hatred towards the subject in most of the students and uh, i want you all to get rid of that idea i want you all to break free from that stereotypes and i want you all to look at the subject in a much more different angle than what you have so far because i want you to fall in love with the subject as i have i want you all to explore the mystical beauty of this subject as i have i want my students also to experience the same i want you all to get this exclusive skill set you get from learning this subject i want you all to experience it i want you all to take that skill set and help yourself to develop your intellect as well as your creativity and of course these days in a world where even common sense is very rare if you can improve your logical and rational thinking definitely it's going to feel like a superpower trust me and that's what this episode is all about i think we have gone through uh what is mathematics what are the branches of it what are the areas you have to start when you are starting to improve in maths and finally we did also talk very briefly about why maths is important and why you should study it and in the next episodes we will go through the next steps in your journey towards improving mathematics till then signing off with love rizlan hasan